Hey everybody, welcome to ChinFat. In this uh, episode and also in the next episode, I'm going to be going over proxies inside of Premiere Pro. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit of a shorter kind of quick demonstration on proxy, creating proxies, and then the next episode will be more of an in-depth one uh, to show you uh, some issues that you can run into with when you're using stuff like red footage or other or Panasonic footage or other types of footage. So first of all, to kind of explain uh, what proxies are, if you are working on a machine or you are using uh, like 4K, like up here you can see that I'm under, uh, th this footage here is 3840 by 2160, which is UHD, which is pretty close to 4K. Uh, then I've got some DJI uh, drone stuff, which is a 4K, and I've got some Blackmagic uh, raw footage that's 4K as well. So now, the issues with this, as you get higher and higher resolution and you have kind of earlier machines that can't handle that stuff, if you have a machine that's like a few years old and you're trying to edit on it, or even like a, a nice big machine that you're using like red 8K footage, 3 to 1 compression ratio or something like that, you're going to be getting uh, very slow speeds if you try to edit it on, on most machines with that insane amounts of resolution. So what proxying does is it takes the, uh, your original footage and it creates a smaller version of the exact same footage, a smaller copy of the uh, footage. Here we've got uh, footage that is 3840 by 2160 UHD, and this is just a little bit larger here with 4, 4096 by 2160. Uh, but we're going to take this down to, we're going to take a lot of the resolution, a lot of the pixels away from it, so it's down to somewhere around 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080, which is a much more, 1920 by 1080 is literally one quarter the resolution of, of uh, 3840 by 2160. Uh, so it only has to process a quarter of the information rather than the full information. And then when you're done editing, you can replace your proxied footage with your original high quality footage. And then you can start doing your color grade and everything else. And that way you maintain that quality level, but you significantly speed up the editing process. With that being said, you have the option of going under a file here and going down to project settings and clicking on ingest settings. Now what the ingest settings do is when you ingest footage or import footage into Premiere, it will automatically uh, do this action here. I kind of don't like this, but you have that option of doing that. And one uh, thing is going to be create proxies. You can do all your proxy settings right here if you want to. And, uh, and then whenever you import footage, it'll immediately start proxying that footage. Now, I kind of don't like this because some footage is just fine and it doesn't need to be proxied and then it just takes an extra, uh, ex it takes up extra hard drive space to do that. So I personally like to import footage and then choose which footage I'm going to proxy. But basically this follows the same method that I'm going to show here, but it's going to, uh, but, but we're choosing which footage we want to proxy. So I'm going to cancel the ingest settings and I'm going to select all my footage here. I'm going to proxy everything, or I could proxy just like say, let's say I'm having trouble uh, playing back the black magic footage or the DGI footage. And we can say, well, I'm just going to proxy this much footage. So I'm going to select all that footage there, or I can just, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to do all my footage. I'm going to hit the command a, which would be control a on a PC. I'm going to right click on my footage here and we're going to go down to proxy and we are going to create proxies. Okay, it will open up this window here and it will start creating proxies as soon as I hit okay, but we're gonna do some settings here. First of all, you're gonna decide the frame size. When it says half, that is literally not half the resolution. It actually ends up being a quarter of the resolution. It's a little confusing, uh, but what this does, quick explanation, you've got 3840 by 2160. 3840 times 2160 gives us a total pixel count of near 8 million pixels. When it says half, it's going to cut this number in half and this number in half, which is basically compounding, and that is actually a quarter of the resolution. So it is cutting these two numbers in half, which will be 1920 by 1080, which is HD resolution rather than UHD resolution. But even if you're just cutting those numbers in half, keep in mind that's compounding this. 1920 times 1080 gives us about 2 million pixels. So 2 million pixels versus 8 million pixels is, is literally one quarter of the resolution. But when Adobe says half, it is cutting down this number by half these two numbers by half, which is literally, once again, one quarter of the resolution, you're going to get some much better editing speeds off of cutting that number down by half, once again, which is one quarter of the resolution. It's actually cutting it down by, by four times there. And then if you go to quarter, it will do half the resolution of 1920 by 1080, so it even compounds it down. So that would be like 1280 by 720. So. Just keep that in mind. So half is usually going to do it just fine. If you want, if you have a really old machine, you might want to do quarter, but I would try half first of all and see if that works. And usually that does cut it down enough that you can edit very, very smoothly. So I'm going to keep half set. I do like to add the watermark. The add the watermark there will add a little burned in image in the bottom left hand corner of your screen that shows it as a proxy. So you know that you are working with the proxies and not with the original footage. 
Uh, so I, I like that check mark. So I'm going to pull down preset and we're going to change this to one of the smoothest proxy files, which is ProRes uh, proxy. I shouldn't say one of the, the smoothest. This is the smoothest proxy codec ever. This is very, very optimized and it runs really, it operates as smooth as butter within Premiere Pro. So, so I'd recommend doing ProRes QuickTime proxy and add the watermark and half the resolution if you're going to 4K will take you down to HD 1920 by 1080. The default in here wants to uh, store the, the proxy footage next to the original. I don't like that. I like keeping my footage separate uh, in its own se in its own uh, footage folder and organized by the day I shoot it and by the roll number that I shoot it. So I prefer to put the proxies into a different uh, folder. I'm not going to get terribly complex. I've got one general folder here uh, that I'm going to do. I'm going to choose a, this location. I'm going to browse. So I'm going to browse and I've got a folder here in my production folder called proxies and that's where I'm going to dump all my proxies. Depending on the organization that I'm doing, if I'm doing a larger project or a small project, sometimes I just dump all the footage into the, all my proxy footage into the same folder. So I've got it half resolution. I've got ProRes QuickTime Proxy. I'm going to add the watermark and it's going to save in that location. Once again, I don't like it next to my original footage. So I'm going to hit OK. And this is going to open up a media encoder automatically. And media encoder is going to be doing the encoding. So it's going to load all these proxies here that I just sent over to media encoder. So it's loading all these clips here inside a media encoder. And now it is and now it is starting to render these things. While the footage is being encoded to proxy footage, let's show you kind of what's happening in here. So I'm gonna hit tilde over my project window here, here which will make it go to, uh, full screen here. Uh, I'm gonna right click on my, my metadata tab does not have a proxy one. I'm gonna right click up here and go to metadata display and we're going to add a proxy to these metadata displays up here. I'm in the search engine, I'm gonna type proxy and you have the option of doing proxy file path proxy media file name if they're different. It is re renaming the file with the addition uh, of proxy onto the name and proxy. Let's just check mark all the all three of these. I like to at least have the proxy one check marked because it shows the proxy status. Let's hit okay. Uh, I'm gonna move these over here, make them closer to my side over here so I can see everything. Proxy media and proxy file name. So I've got the, these all over here so I can see what my new proxy name is going to be. And you'll, under, you'll see that it's adding the underscore proxy to the name. It names it exactly the same name as the actual file but it adds underscore proxy to it. And then as this progresses in Media Encoder and keeps on encoding uh, the files here, you're going to see this happening here. It's going to start adding this name attached, attached, attached. That means these proxies here have been done and the ones that are offline, they are still encoding. So you'll know which ones you can start editing with. You can start editing with these right away, but I'm gonna wait until everything is done and we're gonna show you what it has done here. Okay, so Media Encoder has finished encoding all the proxy footage. If we go back to Premiere here, everything is attached, and now we can start editing the stuff. What I want to do is I want to go into my folder here, and I want to double-click on the proxy footage. Now, don't ever do this. Don't ever go to the proxy folder, import those, and start editing. We're going to show you what you're supposed to do. But I just want to look at one of these and see what, what's happened here. I'm just going to double-click one of these and play it in, in QuickTime here. I open this up, and I hit Command-I. And I'll notice that my resolution has now gone down to 2048 by 1080. So this is now, and now it's in ProRes 422 proxy, uh, which is going to be really smooth editing. Don't ever import these Premiere toggles between the proxies and the high quality within the software. Don't import them. If you import them and edit them, you're stuck with that footage because they have a different name. So do not edit those proxy footage. Do it within the software. Another thing that you got to be aware of as well is this automated uh, create proxy function works really, really well with footage that has either a stereo audio channel or uh, no audio. Like the, a drone, if you're shooting a drone with no audio, uh, it works really, really well. If you have footage that has a stereo channel, it works really, really well. If you're using footage that has uh, any, like a four mono channels, like with a Panasonic or recorded on an Atomos or a RED camera, you just don't want to do this automated cre uh, proxy creation. That's going to be in the next episode and I'll show you how to do that. But once again, it works really well with footage that has a stereo file attached or footage that has no audio attached. So I'm going to grab all my footage here and I'm going to drop it down inside of a time timeline. And let's take a look here. I'm going to drop it in my timeline here. I've got all my footage here. And right now it is reading my high quality footage. Now, if you're having trouble, it's playing back and it's not playing back smoothly. In fact, as I go through the DGA footage here, uh, watch what happens if I start forwarding and I forward more and more, it will start getting jittery like this and it will start to slow down. H.264 uh, is not an optimized codec, so it's going to be really jittery. It is also high resolution. 
Uh, so when you fast forward through this, I'm hitting fast forward LLL to fast forward. It'll eventually start to chug like this. That will not happen with the ProRes pro proxy footage. So once we're inside of here and we're editing, we can go into proxy mode. This is reading the high quality footage that I have in my timeline here. If I click on this little icon right there, if you are not seeing this, by the way, this toggle proxies, listen, let me get rid of that here. If your layout looks like this and you don't see that little proxy switch right there, it does do it by default, so it should be there. But if it doesn't, you can hit this little plus button and you can grab your proxy icon, which is right here. It's that little switch back and forth between video from a large file to a small file. If we zoom up on that, yeah, it shows this, this big square within a small square. We're showing that it's pulling down the resolution. We're going to drag and drop that there, drop it in, hit OK, and now we have that little proxy toggle right there. So now I can hit the little proxy toggle, and now you'll notice this little faint watermark inside the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, which basically says this is now accessing the proxy footage, and this is going to edit a lot, edit a lot smoother. So now if I play through some footage here, and then I hit fast forward, I hit LLL to go faster and faster, this does not start chugging at all. It does not start breaking down and getting and just displaying one frame every three seconds. It is playing as smooth as butter as it fast forwards through this footage. So this footage is a lot smoother. It responds a lot faster than if you were accessing that 4K uh, footage. So now you can perform all the editing that you want to. And then when you're done, you just basically hit this button again and it toggles back to the high quality footage. And now you can color grade this and do whatever you need to to it as well. And you can export out a 4K file if you wish. But that's basically it for showing how to do the proxy workflow. There are just a couple of pitfalls that you want to avoid. And one of those is watching for things, especially when you get into footage that has multiple mono channels rather than a stereo file or no audio at, at all. It works well for those. Just And my second little quick tip is do not import the proxy footage and start editing the proxy footage. That will screw things up and, and your project will be basically, and you'll basically have to start over again. Come over to the proxy switch, flip that, and let Premiere and let Premiere Pro uh, do the work. So that's it for this episode. The next episode, I will go into more details on that and show you some of the pitfalls and some of the things. If you're really getting into some professional uh, production, uh, working with RED cameras, working with some Panasonic cameras, and and, and so on, and I'll show the workflow, what you got to do uh, to create proxies within Premiere Pro. All right. Well, that's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments, let me know.